Phoenix picked up next here. I mean, they've got good save uh, from Pudge. That wouldn't have worked around. The hero's playable now. I just am not sure how good he is. He also... Uh, this is Agon of Separate improves his Rot to do extra damage. It also reduces Five hero healing. Um, which I think is something they need to be worried about here on Electronic Boys if they're planning on... Uh, Playing or picking up like Aghanim Shard on the Warlock or putting Regen items here on the Spectre. So, Pudge has a couple more options that he didn't have in the past. I do think he's playable. I'm not sure that he's playable here. Ooh, okay. Voker picked up. That's a red two hero for sure. Mm -hmm. You do have a last pick here for Candice Volpus in the mid lane. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is just such a weird draft. They could be running a core Pudge. I think that sounds terrible to me, but uh, you could be seeing like a three position Pudge into the Spectre, which really isn't that bad because Spectre is not a hero that can like apply a ton of pressure in lane and Pudge did get some uh, some buffs um, recently. So we, we could see that actually being a three position Pudge as an off lane response to the, the Spectre here. Yeah, all right. Banner another Spirit now on Electronic Boys. Get rid of uh, Ember or anybody with catch... If they're able to play in the mid lane. Just somebody else with catch. Get rid of the Kunkka. Get rid of the Ember Spirit. Uh, who Ten else? Seconds. Arkosh really struggled to start fights on their terms. They can play Five defensively. Seconds. They're able to save people with Pudge. Uh, they can uh, pop a, a Phoenix Egg if uh, Electronic Boys commits onto them. But they're not great at chasing down heroes. Uh, they have to pursue very far forward. And they're up against people who are sometimes going to be hard to catch a decent disengage themselves with uh you know a beaval with uh bat or power cog with a tornado from invoker so the void spirit ban here was very good i'm just thinking about uh what other sort of mid heroes they're gonna end up they could play here maybe maybe just ban out mars potential mars mid i think if you go mars mid you're just lacking more damage but uh we saw last game gyro brings so much to the table that he you know maybe he's enough you have a natural spirit vessel builder on one of these three between omni knight pudge and phoenix right whichever whichever mm. of these ends up being a core you can definitely go for the spirit vessel but, but last game you had like storm uh clockwork they could both uh get on top of heroes and start fights you don't have anybody like that uh this game yeah. on arcos but you need that sort of solution in the mid lane Void Spirit was a good band. They're thinking really hard about uh, they what's could go. probably the best catch here that they want to ban out. They've used all their reserve time on this one. Arkosh still have a full two minutes to think about uh, what it is they want to pick up last as well. Are, are they going to time out? All right, TA, interesting. I think they were just debating on whether or not to do a classic Invoker ban or like a Canis Vulpus comfort pick because, you know, they... Or Invoker matchup ban. You mean. Y what is it? You mean Invoker matchup ban? Yeah, like like the yeah, TA yeah. just a matchup ban against the Invoker, but you know, Kane's Volpus is an incredible Ember Spirit, and even though it's not a good pick usually into the Invoker because of Tornado, um, you still have to you know respect the fact that he is an incredible Ember Spirit player. So you uh, you have that going for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what? Hmm. What? What's? What's this last pick or this last band coming out from uh, Archive? This it's a pretty solid lineup they have at the moment. They could use a little bit uh, more damage heroes that can start things uh, in the mid game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, being able to pressure towers. Uh, wow, that would have been a great yeah, pick. Great for running down <laughs> by Zombie Knight uh, Phoenix. Yeah, we've seen Giant play it a couple times before as well. Yeah. That Timber Saw would have done some work this game. No matter which one of those mm -hmm. cores it is, just gets absolutely melted by that hero. Um, yeah. Ten seconds. Let's see what they decide to do. I mean, they don't have any reserve time. They have one more second to work with after this, and they take up a Brewmaster. Okay. That I'm that one's questionable to me. I don't know how you feel about that, Neff. I love Brewmaster. He's a great hero. He reminds me a lot of myself. Um, is it it's not because you're constantly drunk right no i Ten don't drink I split myself into three small smaller entities to do more Five, work sometimes four you know in my schedule yeah sometimes four if he's really feeling it mm -hmm. yeah there's the ember, ember yeah it needed something with a little bit of catch so i would yeah. like to see that one banned out yeah. instead 
Grimlow Pudge, uh, we are right there. That's what we expected. Uh, it, it makes the most sense, actually, with the draft. I mean, <laughs> as a Pudge specialist myself, um, it actually isn't that bad of a lane. He should do okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're uh you're scratching your head right now. You're not happy about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I don't see how this uh Pudge ends up succeeding. If they can make it work, I would be very impressed. And uh, there's not much uh, Arkosh could do to impress me. But we'll we'll have to see. Brewmaster is going to be very annoying to play against. Uh, uh the biggest issue with that hero is uh, being thrown up into the air with the tornado. Um, it doesn't work, I think, quite like the Yule Scepter Tornado. It can be reduced uh, with status resistance, so we're going to see a Sanjin Yasha come out on Pale Horse this game. Uh, obviously, a lot of the time you pick that up regardless. But that's your main damage dealer is going to be Gyrocopter, and he's going to be thrown into the air by this Brewmaster. So I think uh, when Pale Horse isn't on the ground doing that kind of damage, it's they're just going to lose team fight after team fight here. Uh, Kinas has his, yeah, Kinas work, uh, Kinas Vulpes has a work cut out for him this game. I'm not sure they're going to be able to pull this one off. I see this going into a game three, uh, and I just want to see Electronic Boy succeed as well. Plus, I've never made a false statement in my life, so. Yeah, I, I'm, I actually recall you saying game one that this was an Arkosh game. Yeah, uh, that, that does indeed sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, game number two here, Arkosh Gaming versus Electronic Boys. Uh, Arkosh currently up 1-0 in the series, um, and they have uh, presented us with a very, I would say, unique draft. We've got Gremlo on the pudge, this dude, no hats. Someone send this man. He needs more than just food now, I guess. He's, uh, you know, Pudge is supposed to be a good-looking guy. Uh, obviously, uh, Gremlo has not accomplished that. It's the jawline, I'm telling you, man. It's the jawline. The, the default jawline still looks very good. So what people like about you. That's why they like seeing you on camera. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mostly why uh, Ricky gets picked up to cast, by the way, everybody. It's just a pretty face for BTS. Yeah. Neff really carries the stream. I'm just here as uh, Jerry's puppet, I think. Uh, uh, Jerry's puppet master. Yeah, or the puppet. Yeah, either or. I'm Jerry, a very low-cost production, man. Mm-hmm. 30 seconds to battle. What's he uh, eating tonight? Uh, we'll see. I mean, he did have a couple mistakes. Uh, well, you might give him dinner. Let me tell you what uh, Electronic Boys, but uh, to feed off of Arkosh. That's what they're having for dinner. Well, here. I mean, they don't have the vision. Arkosh does, and Gremlo could just go for a, a hook here. Oh, they're positioned so well. Goat now hiding behind this tree. He is going to walk into double. But uh, Gremlo, he walks up. He does reveal that there is a ward in the mid lane, but it's on the right side since they didn't uh, really play around the vision here at the top side. And they will just go aggressive. They'll take this rune. Uh, however, Spectre in the bottom. Speed's going to grab that one. And uh, it will just end up being a two for two. Very anticlimactic. A lot of fake hype coming, uh, here coming out. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Wait. Yeah, yeah, two for two. He's picking up the last one right now. There he is. He's uh, making his way down for the bottom lane. Pudge struggles to sit inside the lane like he used to. There's yeah. a little while where uh, he'd get the bonus HP regeneration from Flesh Heap. Uh, it was too hard to harass him out. Sometimes you'd see the, the Chen and Pudge uh, in the off lane together. Uh, it was pretty powerful, but uh, I don't know. Against uh, the Warlock and the Spectre, Spectre is going to be able to, to stand his ground, run down uh, Gremlo here on this Pudge, just like throw out the, the Spectral Dagger and trade with him. The, you know, the extra attack speed and the damage reduction that he's got with uh, Dispersion. And, of course, uh, Albino Zebra is going to be able to heal him up. One of the things I actually do really like about Pudge is the fact that he's a hero. You don't need to buy Quelling Blade on from the offlane. Um, he's just 75 damage, right? Like, you normally you need to have a Quelling Blade to contest last hits. Pudge has never really been one of those heroes. Like, buying Quelling Blade was basically just a waste of gold, and you can come to lane instead with more regen. Uh, he's going to have a Bracer coming out already. Um, and it's just one of those things that makes this hero kind of unique from some other ones. Top lane Pale Horse. Falling quite low, though. Giant and double on the uh, chase here. He's going to make it back to his tower. He has no regen. Where is his courier? Hello? Uh, it's... Hmm. Okay, he's it's just getting, getting the, the, the good old gifted tangos from the support. Okay. No, he's not. Uh, support's out of tangos, and you sent out two mangoes and nothing else. Well, he got so his last gonna, tango, at least. Yeah, he's going to click uh, Heavenly Grace on him to heal him up. What is it? 8 HP regen a second? That's not bad, but 26 second cooldown. So he's uh. going to heal 80 HP when he uses this on him. 
And he's got purification now. It'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, he actually opted to go first point into Heavenly Grace uh, against this Brewmaster. So dispelling that Cinder Brew when he applied it. So it's not hitting the slow. It's not doing that uh, DPS. So smart pickup grabbing that at level one there. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you're talking about uh, Pudge, you know, not needing a Quelling Blade anymore. He'll have to get a Bracer, which uh, was improved in this patch. The HP regeneration was buffed by uh, 0.25. I know you're thinking, all right, that doesn't mean that much, but it adds, it up. adds up. It does yeah. add up a lot. Over the course of the lane stage, ends up being, you know, a ton of HP. And uh, he's just going to go two. He just goes double Bracer on this hero. He's going to have about 1,300 health by the time he gets to level six. And uh, mm -hmm. that's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of a help. Lot of it's yeah. like the Kunkka effect, right? For the mid lane hero. Um, you guys know what I, you know you guys know that guy. He wears a pirate hat, has a sword, calls uh yeah. calls boats into the, you, you know you know you know what F? You know what that is? Yeah. Okay. You know they gave Dawnbreaker three point eight uh strength growth rate in one of the past they reduced it to three point yeah, six. Yeah, three point six but, now, yeah. Yeah, but it was like a hero with a ton of armor, a decent movement speed, uh thirteen uh, like six uh, like eight uh, like seven, eight minutes into the game, Dawnbreak would be running at you with like 13, 1400 HP. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's one of those heroes who just had such incredible base stats. And as yeah. a result, they're just, you you don't lose the lane, like ever. You yeah. don't lose the lane on those types of heroes um, unless you like definitely misplay it or you're into like one of the few hard counters that she had. Um, yep. Speaking of heroes with the amazing base stats, Gyrocopter, one of those. He's got the, yeah. the great abilities as well. He's running down Giant. Decent job here. He's got salve. He's doing all right. Does force the salve though. Goat. Uh, double a nice creep pull here. He's not gonna be able to block the hard camp though. Nice uh, hook CS there onto the range creep bottom. Definitely intentional. But look at Grandlow's CS, man. 20 and 6. This is what I'm talking about. You, you As a Spectre, you actually cannot zone this hero out of the lane. It's not possible. Yeah, uh, mid lane is back and forth at the moment you have a lot more cs here on uh ember spirit but red two has got a lot of nice he's uh 20 and 10 to ember spirits uh 27 and 3 because of that and uh, a little bit of xp on him Especially one thing too XP. is the quas wex invoker is a little bit l like nerfed in lane i would say just because you don't have the uh, incredible amount of regen that you used to get from quas you have a little bit more health but it was usually the regen that you played around because you didn't have to go for these runes. And uh, now you actually do. So he, he's not as strong as he used to be in the lane stage, I think, as Quaswex. I, I, you know, someone who's actually oh, yeah. an invoker player might argue that with me, but... Yeah, I mean, this is why he's off to go the Sleight of Fist build against the, the invoker here. A lot of the time, the damage wouldn't stick yeah. on uh, to the invoker. he just heal up way too fast. But you've only got 13 HP regeneration a second. Uh, because that uh, Red 2 is sitting here at half HP. So, yeah, you're exactly right about that one. It's difficult to bring him down 100 to 0, but a lot of the time it's just like, okay, well, I can't harass the Invoker out of lane. He has way too much HP regen. If those are the Tornadoes, that gives uh, Ember Spirit the opportunity to run him with Flame Guard. doesn't have the Dispel anymore. You have to be a little bit careful when you pop that one. Goat nearly goes down top lane. Pale Horse? Oh, I'm just going to get a free Courier. He's happy about that one. He could go for a TP out. Pale Horse, yeah, no chance on that one. Double with the Cogs. And now he's uh, in kind of a rough place here. He could turn around, try and get the purification from Goat. It looks like he just says, screw it. I'm going to outrun them, take their bounty rune. Very nice. You can't really outrun a clockwork, though. He gets the neutral oh, creep denial. denial. All right. All right. All right. He gets no TP from that. It's 100 gold that you're losing for that one, buddy, and the extra respawn time. You think you're clever. We'll see about that. Crow Inspector bottom lane trading quite a bit. Bottom lane speed, you know, now is uh, multiple points. This uh, shout out word from Warlock is uh, a little bit better against uh, Gremlo here. He's having great CS for a moment, but now Spectre is able to contest a little bit easier. Against uh, Pudge, he's got great base strength, he's got base damage, but he's only got uh, the three strength growth rate, so it's not like the lane gets uh, that much easier for him as thing goes on. Warlock's all got to stay close to him at all times. Uh, cause you have to be worried about the punch just running you down. You've only got two points in dispersion right now. And, uh, you know, if he starts dropping these uh, launched fire spirits on him, suddenly he's not going to be yeah. able to drop his auto attack. Tons trade. of damage. <laughs> Hook comes out. They have the dive speed. Might go down, but a nice rotation from the invoker. Finds first blood and it's a double kill, basically. That's what you need to get out of your mid lane invoker. 
Come on, hit him with the all chat red too. Let's see it. Come on. They did it to you last game. Look, too well mannered to do it. He knows they're not worth red two's time. He's not even gonna say it. You've actually swapped lanes a little bit. Pale horse is now mid. Yeah. Interesting. I guess uh you know this gives them more opportunity to to look for kills elsewhere with uh, the Ember Spirit. Invokery doesn't have that same solo kill potential on people that a lot of other mid uh, laners do, anyways. Is the Quas Wex doesn't shove out the lane that fast either, so it's not like he's able to pressure the tower too much if uh, you don't have as strong of a hero inside the lane. Ember Spirit now in the base. Remnants all the way back to lane. Yeah, that's the standard, right? Pick up some items, regen your bottle. No big deal. The the concern is uh, your TP is on cooldown when you die. You want to be able to move around fast and find lots of kills with Ember Spirit. So. Rotation bottom lane once again. Speed in some trouble. They will be able to finish off Gremlo. Invoker once again with these rotations doing some big work here. This Quas Wax. I mean, this is what this is what Quas Wax Invoker is good at, right? These rotations to the lanes, and you have plenty of movement speed to make it back. The one thing that is kind of nice is they gave Wex attack speed now, didn't they? It just didn't uh, did. Or no, it didn't. Yeah, it Good didn't Jody. have agility, everything right? Gives, yeah. Different, everything gives... Uh, it was like this for a little while, back when attributes were in the game, and they removed attributes, they got rid of this. Yeah. Goat lost all of his mana. He could pop a mango, tries to heal himself, but he gets it off, but he ends up dropping anyways. He's gonna fill that urn back up. Two charges again. You can look for another kill with it. How do they not He's have... Weird. Hmm? I'm gonna say they, they have it on like the change logs down below where it says now provides two agility, but it's just not part of the ability tooltip. Yeah, uh, I imagine they'll get around to that one eventually. That's uh, six point, <laughs> or what is it, 7.29C? Uh, That's what we're gonna be seeing. All the uh, tooltip yeah. updates. Tooltips are uh, now adjusted to reflect game changes. <laughs> we can't wait. Oh, it's nice that at least it is on the ability instead of you kind of guessing. Beautiful hook at the bottom lane by Gremlin. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his ultimate yet, so he can't follow that up uh, with the dismember. Yeah, it's just harassment <laughs> damage. Um, they do force out, uh, you know, three level three Shadow Word. Okay, so ABZ is just down here to enable the Spectre and keep him in lane as long as possible. And as a result, he's level seven, whereas Gremlin has really fallen down in experience. Only level five. Those two rotations from Red 2 have really paid off. Yeah. Uh, they, they have. Uh, Richie definitely needed to rotate as well. Uh, Pudge was getting a little bit out of hand. Now he's uh, struggling a little bit. He's going to be an issue once again. Uh, once he does get uh, that level six, he throws up the hook, just misses. Speed pauses in place. I think they need to be focusing the Warlock. I mean, going for the Spectre, it's kind of nice, but he has so much armor. He is armor, but not magic resistance and not much HP. So uh, Gremlo is able to find the kill on him if he can connect any of these spells. In fact, Pale Horse moves you down here as well. Speed, it's time for him to leave. Gremlo just He's can't just going hook. for it. That doesn't matter. They just seem like they do not care. TPs are coming in. The call down is there. A huge Fatal Bonds as well as a Tornado Egg going to be committed. Speed trying to get back on over. The Fire Spirits, is it enough to slow him down? No, the Egg does end up dying. Gremlo. Pops that dismember onto the warlock, but he doesn't have the damage alone. And now Pale Horse, he's gonna get daggered up and chased down. What a disaster! A complete disaster there. A really bold move, trying to jump on a specter of all heroes behind the tower. He's got tons of room to maneuver in the trees. He had haunt available. He just left, then came back the the moment they you know given up. Uh, got on top of that Phoenix egg again and blew it up. Arkosha. Uh, Questionable plays there, thinking they could do that. And yes, you do have enough damage to kill Spectre because it's low HP, but. Uh, can his hope is <laughs> mid? He, commit like that. he might be no dead good. here. He went in trying to go for ABZ and just gets punished. A Bino Zebra, he's just too smart. And it's tip comes out from AV1 onto Canis Vulpus. You should know better. The brains behind Electronic Boys. Bottom there lane, Gremlo is. chases down speed. Didn't want to miss the hook for the fans there, so instead he just gives up his own light. His pride is still intact, though. Yeah. Uh, reason for this, uh, Blade Mail came out a little bit slow here on the spec. They managed to kill Spectre's Courier. Uh, now that he's back to base, he completes that one. If he's able to stand his ground uh, and fight against this Pudge, activate that Blade Mail, he'll be able to grab him. Now he's got to get a higher HP. Nice push in the mid lane here by Red 2, you know, spamming that uh, alacrity off on the catapult, taking down as quick as possible. Lose all the mana here on Goat, and he's just gone. Yeah, I managed to barely clip him with that uh, EMP. I thought he was out. Is 
Canis. Needing to recover a little bit. Sitting at level 8 to red 2's 10. This draft is not doing the same work that it did last game. No, they've really started to fall behind. I mean, uh, you do have the gyrocopter, but last game there were tons of stacks for him to fall back onto. And that's just not the case this game. They are they they have this offlane Pudge who like really needs to be active right now, finding kills. They do see giant bottom. They do throw the missile out, but um, this isn't your target. He's I got mean, if you get the hook, available. maybe. Yeah, he gets the primal split off, and now Gremlo, very confused on what to do with his life. The egg will eventually, uh, you know, complete. Crow can dive away, but just gets cold snapped. Not going to make it very far with that. Nice, uh, heaven, or what is this thing even called? Guardian Angel, that's what that's called. A two-man chain, though, on the side. Hookshot comes in, trying to stop them. First, so far, the only hero to go down is going to be this, uh, Phoenix. And then Deafening Glass comes out. They'll find another. Gremlo, as well, goes down. It's really up to Kane's Volbazir. He's got to clean up this fight big time. He's going to be able to get a second kill there onto that Clockwork Invoker stuck underneath the tower. Nice purification onto Red 2. Pops that Cold Snap onto Goat, and he will end up finding the kill. Ends up being a 4 for 3. Become peace. Yeah, uh, Warlock not part of that one. Spectre not part of that one. Uh, nice team fight there. Unfortunately, things would have gotten a little bit better for Arkosh. Uh, not a great initiation again, despite putting all uh, heroes down there. Dismember interrupted immediately the hook, not connecting with the Brewmaster. The Phoenix Egg was good, but he ended up uh, committing that one. If Spectre was a little bit higher HP, he would have been able to haunt in at the tail end of that team fight. But once he had it off of cooldown, uh, he was sitting at like 200 uh, health. He was trying to clear Ancients with Blade Mail made things a little bit slow. So even though that fight went a little bit in the favor of Arkosh, not a whole lot, uh, Spectre was farming the entire time. This is going to be a serious issue. Yeah, Spectre is getting to be a real problem. Speed, the blade mill, like you mentioned, going into the Mantis style, pretty much the standard build there. Hook, yeah, we gonna see this secure one a regen, very nice. Yeah, we saw this one a lot at uh, was it BTS. Uh, the Summit 13 online. Uh, Envy went this build basically every single game. Yeah. HP regen item, blade mail, manta, rope, win game. He went zero boots every game. Yeah. Oh, he, he went Kane's Volpus uh, off the mark with that slight chains. Hookshot comes in, doesn't actually connect though. <laughs> Both teams mm -hmm. trying to find an engagement in their favor and it's just not going to happen. Yeah, both these teams. They smoke up now on Arkosh. I look for a kill. This. It's hard uh, to get the initiation. On Clockwork, it's a little bit rough. He's going to be able to pop his battery assault. He's got a power cog to disengage and invoker. He's going to be able to pop his tornado. Hold the hook. Uh, the Deafening Blast oh. comes out, but the Dismember. They should have the damage here to finish him off. Red 2. Tell me they have detection, right? Okay. He dies anyway. Gremlo ends up finding it with the Rot. This does open up a lot of damage onto this Tier 1 tower. They might be able to defend here. They do have Primal Split as well as the Golem. You got to be careful here, though. They can't get that good of a setup without the Invoker, though. They need a Tornado to, to help start these fights. Pushed back by the car who doubled it. They didn't have vision of that one. Canis Volpus, he has a Remnant out. He's playing very aggressive because he knows he can get out double now. Gets hooked. Hookshot comes out, trying to be kept alive, but the Golem comes down. Can they finish out Capables? There's going to be the Remnant on out speed with the Haunt on in. Goat trying to run away. A big AoE purge. Well played there by Giant there on that uh brewmaster a hook trying to do what damage he can but on the side of the fight it's really goat being chased by speed egg comes out trying to get some space gyrocopter with a call down giant not really want to be canis volpus back into the fight he tp'd all the way back to the base the tornado throws him up into the air crow a lot of damage coming in with this sunray but it doesn't look like pale horse is gonna be able to survive this one the blade mail finally getting popped here ember spirit out of mana goat will go down two man searing chains you gotta be careful. Kane is Volpus, the me, the Deafening Blast, the Meatball, that Spirit Vessel, and a Dagger. More than enough. They end up getting another fantastic fight here on the side of E-Boys. Beautiful uh, fight there. And that ends up being uh, 2,000 XP in their favor. 1,150. Gold is still connects with Red 2. Tornado comes out, but I'm not sure it's gonna matter. Interrupted by the He's actually snap? protected for a moment by the Hood of Defiance to get that Dismember off, but... Yeah, there was follow-up damage. We'll be able to keep him alive. That was almost a super big brain play there by Gremlo. Yeah. They had to define to stop that uh, chain stunner, the interruption there, and the cold snap, making it not do any damage. 
Nice play there by him, but uh, not mattering a whole lot. Grublo not having a great game on this pudge, you know. He seems to want to make this hero viable, but he's 2-6 and six is the offlane run now. He's sitting at level 8. Uh, for reference, Albino Zebra is inching in at level 10. Yeah, I would say the big problem is the experience here. Pudge <laughs> is one of those heroes that, like, with levels ends up kind of scaling pretty well. The shard is actually a pretty decent save mechanic um, if you get to it. But this game, it's like, is there something in specific that you're like, oh, you know, we really want this uh, save here? You know, and it doesn't really feel that way. EMP, they're going to be able to chase down Pillhorse. There's going to be the pole. They catch Brewmaster. Do they have any way of stopping this dismember? The call down is there. Giant, can he get out? He will not. A nice pickoff from Arkosh. Not quite enough. Uh, not quite enough bulk on him. He might want to get a little bit more magic resistance. Oh, we have a Maybe Meteor Hammer on Crow. That's actually huge. Interesting. The Meteor Hammer Phoenix, the, the swoop in and then uh, dropping it as you go, hitting the towers with it. Yeah. It's always fun. The the good old, oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah. He's going for the uh, Aghanim Shard on Phoenix, which allows you to cast a Sun Ray during your supernova and slows enemies by 12%. Makes running people down a little bit easier. Alongside Pudge, it always feels pretty good. Like uh, multiple slow, like another slow on top of the rot. You're just not going anywhere. Speed, good enough to turn around here. Dude, this Quicksilver Amulet on Spectre is sick. Hook in the mid lane. Yeah, Searing Chains. Okay, they are doing a pretty good job at setting up these hooks. I'll give them that double now. Really aggressive, uh, trying to save his boy, and ends up going down. Kane's Vulva is a beautiful uh, remnant there. He has Deso, dude. He's coming online. A Desolator Orb of Corrosion build. Yeah, I was worried about uh, you know, some damage problems or being able to, to deal with this Warlock healing the Spectre as the game goes on. But Desolator is a nice pickup. They're trying to play this as fast as possible here on the Ember. Still, speed is a massive issue mm -hmm. on the Spectre. If he, as soon as he gets his Mantis style, this game's going to get a lot harder. One of the things that happens with Phoenix in this situation where you have like this Meteor Hammer and like a three position that doesn't really farm, you end up picking up a lot of items uh, on a four Phoenix. And you can see right now, like she's about to catch um, the off lanes. Like Phoenix is going to be very farmed this game. Mm -hmm. yeah. bottom tower is the Meteor Hammer <laughs> definitely helps uh, find this farm. Helps push towers as well. Yeah. You see bottom they lane, it's taking almost half of its health and damage from two Meteor Hammers now. Grumlone healing up and trying to farm the neutral creeps on the enemy side of the map. Speed getting closer to this uh, Mantis style, needing another 300 gold till it's done. Then I imagine they're going to want to take a uh, team fight. Well, maybe they'll wait till Giant has his Aghidim Scepter and hits uh, level 12 as well. Two points in the primals, but pretty important. Been sitting at uh, this first level as ultimate for a while now. Feels a little bit underwhelming at this point. Yeah. Speed's about to have that Manta style, just about 100 Radiant gold Spartan away. Grimlo going Blink Dagger. Uh, I was curious what he was going to end up building. Mm -hmm. I'm not crazy about that one. If he's got Blink Dagger, he's going to need a BKB pretty quickly after that, but he's struggling to find farm. I think it's that's a fine. Small hmm? I like the BKB huh? immediately after. Yeah, that's what I'm, so that's, yeah, I'm agreeing with you on that one. I think the BKB is the right choice. Yeah. He's gonna need another four armor with his uh, talent here once I think he gets level 11 so he's able to stand and fight. He'll feel pretty tanky at that point. But yeah, BKB very necessary if he's going this Blink Dagger. Hook shot, they catch Omni Knight on the side, push him back with the cogs. Gonna go ahead and drop out that Heavenly Grace, try and just TP out, but you're uh, standing next to a Clockwork Goat. I don't know about that one. Hans Volpus has a DD rune. Oh my goodness. Oh. That is an absurd amount of damage. Double on the run. Is there a tornado coming? Not quite yet. Kanis Volvis, do you need to be careful, though? We'll take that remnant out. Meanwhile, no bottom lane still. Phoenix just been focusing this tower down slowly and steadily. And it is a fortification committed to try and keep this alive. On one hand, that's another reason why Ember Spirit feels very good in this game. It's the catch and uh, the fact that you don't have a lot of really hard lockdown here. Oh, what a on, scan. Uh, uh, they just scanned Canis Vulpus. He has to know that this is right, that they're right there, right? They're also not going into the jungle. Pale Horse. Gonna go d Pale sit behind his tier two. Okay, nicely done. Well, based on that curry, he knows that they're behind him, right? So that's the thing. Yeah. 
So Pale Horse pretty much has all the info he needs now with the scan and that courier kill. He's just going to sit behind that tower and be uh, plenty safe. Meanwhile, bottom tier two finally does go down, opening up that outpost. So that XP per minute going to start going the way of Arkosh. Middle tower is under attack. All right, DC from uh, Giant. Looks like they're going to take a moment, but using that space very well. Uh, wasted smoke rotation there from E Boys. Arkosh, uh, his meteor hammer is really paying off. I got to say, there's no way that tower goes down if he didn't like. He dropped like three, four meteor hammers. He dropped on five it. meteor hammers on it. Uh, it. It's like almost entirely the meteor hammer that took down yeah, that. Bottom it was, tier yeah, too. it absolutely was. And the other thing is, is this all this time that we wait? What just happened on net worth? Did it? It just like changed while hmm? what that was weird what do you mean uh giant's net worth when he like reconnected the game changed <laughs> it was very bizarre uh, you can't see disconnected players net worth so you it was uh somebody uh, else you were hovering over and then he reconnected the game so it started showing you his gotcha okay i was gonna say the uh phoenix has almost caught the pudge which pudge has somehow managed to you know keep up a little bit i, I was actually really worried that he was gonna fall behind but it's the Phoenix that, uh, like I said, this is the hero that I am I am very worried about for Electronic Boys because if this Phoenix gets levels and gets farm, it's going to be like incredibly difficult for them to deal with this egg. Grummo just sitting down here like a coward on the hill. Yeah, he's just baiting this, uh, this big firebird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bro, he's gonna drop another meteor. Oh, oh he God. tried to interrupt that with a battery assault. Yeah, that'd have been sick. You know, damage done though. The, this, these are uh, these, these are. This is permanent damage, right? It's unhealable damage. There's nothing you can do about this. No lich in this game. No train protector. Not gonna heal that one back up. This tower already down 500 HP. Space for gyro. Go back too. and forward again. Another 10 seconds. You got another dive. He's going to do it, space I think. Space for Gyro, but uh, uh, also Space for Spectre, keep in mind. Yeah, that is true. Hell Horse almost to BKB. Spectre. What is Spectre going for here? He's underneath the sentry speed. We'll see this. Go in the eye of Scotty now that the Manta is completed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's playing against Gyrocopter, playing against uh, Pudge, Phoenix, Omni Knight. Um, you know, ranged heroes here with a lot of HP regen. Very useful for that. A lot of time you want to build on Spectre anyways. It does feel pretty good getting those stats slowing people down even more under your spectral dagger so once he has that one online i imagine he's gonna be a little bit more willing to fight uh one of the nerfs that did hurt spectre in the ultra late game uh was that nerf the abyssal blade not blinking on top of uh units anymore there's a really good utility build uh before mid lane Canis, oh Canis. he gets hook caught shot. by the hookshot barely the cogs what a sick play by double so not respecting the, the damage the hookshot didn't connect with him, but uh, when he landed the on collision, the creeps, it yeah. went through him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The collision went through him. So it's still stunning for the full duration there. You're feeling super calm to get on the Ember Spirit because they don't have any hard lockdown here. The biggest stun they have is actually just this hookshot. It's just 1.5 seconds, but that was enough right there. Yeah, he really underestimated the amount of damage that the Invoker was going to do in that time frame. I mean, he's level 17. You know, that, that Sunstrike was substantial. I mean, we look at his... His death summary. Okay, well, we, I forgot. Death summary is still broken in lobbies. Thank you. XD. XD. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we talked about uh, in that last game. Uh, nice. Crow. Uh, interesting here. Gotta be careful. Battery itself came out. Yeah. Uh, they are just TPing everyone into this tower. Pale Horse is here. Does have call down and the BKB dropping. This homing missile, the MP going to do what it can, does snap onto Gremlo. This man's got no mana, nothing left. Spear Vessel going to be purged for the moment. Tornado comes through. Gremlo's got to be careful. The call down, though, a lot of damage. There's going to be the split the egg on the low ground. They got no way to, to kill this. They will get their first kill onto Gremlo, but Speed, he's going to get popped. The stun comes out. Invoker now taking so much damage as well. Pale Horse protected still. Trying to do what he can. Speed stuck here. Giant uses that second split here. Thanks to the Aghanim Scepter, and Goat's going to go down. Channeling that Meteor Hammer on the backside. Doesn't connect onto anyone. Canis Vulpus thrown up into the air with his Yules, trying to do what he can. Can he get away speed? He's barely surviving. Gremlo trying to find him. The dismember coming off cooldown. He is going to be able to get the clockwork. But speed, that's the big kill. They are going to go ahead and chase here onto Giant. They will be able to find him on the backside. Canis Vulpus and Gremlo, plenty of damage between the two of them. The missile chasing for Red 2 here, trying to be kept alive. 
Tornado to buy him some space. Well played by him. They have the dive, though. The Meteor Hammer comes out. There's no chance of that at all, but they're not done the hook. It finds ABZ. Gremlo with a triple. At the end of the day, the buyback ends up being incredibly value. He gets back into that fight, and he manages to take it for his team. That team fight incredibly close there. I, I gotta say, like, beautiful play there by Giant, you know, getting these splits off, uh, dispelling the Omni Knight's Guardian Angel. Uh, it, he did all the right things, tossing that gyrocopter up into the air, but regardless, that tail end of that fight, I, th I think, pretty, went pretty poorly for them. Uh, he popped that Drunken Brawler after coming out of his uh, Primal Split uh, for the second time and didn't get any crit procs off onto this uh, Ember Spirit. He would have been able to take him down. I think the team fight might have ended slightly different if he had gotten them. Beautiful buybacks there by uh, Grumlo. Just way too tanky for him to bring down a second time for getting back into that. If uh, they have this Eye of Scotty here on Spectre, I think that fight goes a little bit different, but it's too easy for them to, to run around. The Spectre still doesn't feel tanky. And now speaking of speed. Oh, he's got a hook. Oh, guess is incorrect. Pops the Manta. That's a lot of damage coming in here from the Spectre. Grumlo is just dead. No way you're getting away from that one. Yikes. They're looking for him. The rest of the team kind of rotated up here. Warlock behind him. Kane is Volpus. You got to be careful, man. The Manta Spectre. If there's no one there to soak that uh, desolate damage. I mean, that is what? Uh, yeah. 200, 180, like, pure damage or something every uh, half second. I think you just, uh, you let the Omni Knight come in close to you. You try to bite the main Spectre, then wait for a team to arrive. The only issue is you're playing that very close to the oh enemy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, tier Look one at the Crow. Lane. What a gamer. Oh, uh, Sunray TP. The yeah, old yeah. Show. Manages to dodge Invoker and Clockwork spells. Gets the TP out. Uh, the Classico. Love to see it. Pillars is in Roche. I mean, they have Deso, Orb of Venom. I mean, it's a ton of damage, but they know this is going on. Flare comes in. They need to bail. Dagger up on a Pale Horse. Just so dang slow. He's actually going for... Um... <laughs> Completing staff. Mjolnir. What the oh, heck? I was talking about uh, Grimlow was actually going for four staff before he completes his BKB. More mobility, I guess. Up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know about that one. It's going to be pretty crazy inside these team fights. You need magic to actually get the dismember off, especially if you're playing against the Clockwork. There's, uh, you have trouble catching people. You build a blink dagger to deal with that. But Speed doesn't have Manta for this. He is going to get caught for the moment. Nice dodge on the hook. Loses a lot of HP. Double ends up hooking an illusion. The Fatal Bond's doing some work, but now Double in a really bad position here. Slide Chain's out on the mark, and they're just going to cut their losses, lose the clockwork. Meanwhile, Crow still farming, by the way. He hasn't left this bottom lane just, uh, other than the one time he had to TP out. He has a Shiva's Neff in 300 gold. All right, so he's going for Shiva's. That's going to reduce hero healing, so it's going to be that much harder to keep the Spectre alive, uh, especially with the Warlock, who doesn't have his Aghanim Shard just yet. Once he gets that one on the Warlock, it's to be a little bit easier, but Crow's barely participating in the fights. He's just been shoving out towers, shoving in creep waves, and farming. He's going to get another Meteor Hammer off in this Tier 3. Yep. The only person that can really stop him is Clockwork and Invoker. And there's been multiple times where I've seen him just sit back and wait for them to show on the map. And he's just like, boom, I'm going to go bottom now. No big deal. Tornado going to come through. EMP as well. Going to chew through all of their mana. Nice slight dodge from Canis Volpus there. But this upheaval doing so much work. Nice hook out from Gremlo. Sunstrike on the mark. Canis Volpus, he's got to go base. Oh, cool. He just got chunked, baby. Well, he's healing them a lot up here. You know, they've got the, the Phoenix uh, Sunray. He, he has base anyway, so. Okay. Yeah, he has a remnant I mean, out. He'll base. You have Heavenly Grace, Purification, uh, Sunray. I'm not sure that was necessary. TP's on cooldown now, which kind of sucks, but other than that, you Arcane fine. Rune picked up by Red 2. <laughs> he was afraid. He went in for a moment and uh, saw the sentry, realized it was a problem. Oh, Gremlins actually found the real Spectre top. No haunt available either. But uh, that means Dismember's down for a good chunk of time. It doesn't have the Shard uh, or level uh, 18 yet, so. Quickening Charm found by the Spectre since that went back to base. I imagine that's going to go the way of uh, either Invoker or Brewmaster. Having those, uh, like, their ultimate come off a of cooldown, especially when you got two Charters to work with, feels pretty good. Enchanted Quiver. All right. He's going to hold on to that one in Invoker. Yeah, that's dead. so good for... Uh... Yeah. All of your, all of your kit. 
Yeah, and now uh, working on this. Oh my gosh, they actually found Spectre Top, top and there's the Ags coming out from the uh, Ember Spirit. Speed's just dead. He got, too, he got too greedy playing up here. Mm -hmm. Thinks he's invincible. Rest of the team's there as well and can't afford to pop that haunt just to disengage at this point. Now opens up the opportunity for them to take Roche. They're going to so wait for the buyback, here. right? That's the idea. They're like, we'll sit here as long there. as we can, but he just doesn't have it. Yeah. There's such good items on the Spectre as well. The Orb of Destruction, Scotty, if you get on top of people, they just can't get away. No, the <laughs> Radiant actually gets the Roche with that tornado. So they do snatch the Aegis instead of uh, getting the uh, XP there. And the gold. Alrighty. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, we call the we call those the uh, the small plays that, ma that, that matter at the end of the game. Yeah. 30 more okay. seconds, still no Spectre though. Uh, the downside of being level 21 this early into the game. Fortification comes out. Obviously, just trying to slow down this push. They'll get that restored after the uh, tower goes down. But uh, Pale Horse just farming on the gyro. The BKB, the Mjolnir completed. I'm sure he's got something else. Maybe he's closing in on the Satanic? Uh, it's hard to yeah, say. I don't know where his courier is. His courier is on top of the other couriers in base. They're all flying on top of each other. Perfect. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. They all look the same. They've got, they've got a bunch of donkeys. Yeah, it's fitting for their team. Mm -hmm. um, bottom lane, they're looking for Pale Horse. He is alone. Deja vu from last game. Drow got there again. He has Aegis. He has BKB. The team trying to beeline it down here as fast as possible. And his Vulpus will be the first. He jumps on his back line, finds Red 2. Pale Horse pops the BKB, but it's the pure damage of the Spectre that he needs to worry about. Finding the creeps coming in to try and help split this damage, but they get one. They get two. They're trying to turn up. They get a third triple kill for Pale Horse. All set up on the backside because of Cadence Vulpus here. A Searing Chains holding them in place. This egg gonna just shred these heroes. Giant barely able to get out. Has the Lotus Orb, so you can't go for the Dismember here. He has another split. Will commit it, and now he's just gonna send that Storm Panda as far away as possible. He will be able to get out. I just couldn't bring down that Gyrocopter fast enough there. Uh, it, they paid the price for it. That team fight, it was Gyro. Managed to pump out uh, like almost 6,000 damage before he went down. That was entirely him getting back up and just shredding into your team. I think the fight might have gone a little bit different if the Spectre pumped uh, that hot uh, before like the rest of Arkosh arrived. And Vokra may have been able to slow a couple of them down with the uh, tornado or just ignore Gyrocopter, get away from them so you're not grouped up on top of all that AoE damage. But that was a uh, worst case scenario for them there. I mean, sure, they get the Gyrocopter, but they're definitely not worth it. Yeah. It, it's it's pretty remarkable how close it was for the gyro because if that creep wave wasn't there he dies right the desolate yeah. damage was just shredding through his hp even through the bkb and as soon as that creep wave uh, arrived the specter's damage just got like oh. cut in, into there, a, a fraction there's another argument to be made there because uh the creep wave being there grumlow tried to hook the gyrocopter out uh, and connect it with the creep instead of grumlow that is true or sorry instead of uh, pale horse yeah so uh, that's the other side of the argument. So definitely saving him there, not any desolate damage, but uh, he might have survived just from getting uh, hooked out there by Grumlo. That didn't connect with the creeps. He's now working on his BKB. Grumlo not having a good time, but got a little bit more XP under his belt after that team fight that he managed to survive through. Crow with a casual Shiva's completed now. She's like, yeah, I guess Genus? I can get a refresher. The one. Hex! They caught him. What a sick grab. The Hex reveal from Red 2. Yeah, he had that, I think, in the last fight, but it probably didn't notice on top of everything else happening. And this is super big. Uh, they lock, they lack lockdown. We've been talking about that all game, so you feel kind of invincible here on the Ember Spirit. After that one, you might want to be you're thinking about building a, an Aeon Disc. And the thing that's scary is anytime Red Zoo's Ramlo? off the map, he's just going to make these rotations over and over. Force Staff giving him some space. He does have a lot of resistance, but Sunstrike's going to kill him. Another great pickoff. Yeah, it's it's the ghost walk, like literally hasted around the map into a hex that you have to be so worried about if you're by yourself. You know, Red 2 yeah. will have the damage to kill you. He also got a lot of int to work with. Invoker, one of the higher uh, int growth rates in the game, helped out even more by, uh, you know, all these points in Vigzort now providing extra intelligence. He's got uh, 121 base int right now. That is a lot. That is a big number now. Yeah, he's a very smart guy, Red 2. His uh, brain is just massive. Hookshot? Oh my gosh, mark. just barely off the mark. But... 
Yeah, it's going to be an easy pick off here. On to go. Nowhere to go. Split pushing continues here from Arkosh. Yeah, man's just firing warning shots. And they're going to go right up onto the high ground. They have buyback available on all these heroes. Going to respawn in four seconds here. On Canis. All right, missile coming out. Pale Horse back into the base now. And I think they're going to respect it. Well, throws a remnant very aggressively. No, they're going to be okay. The rocket right back at you. Be fearless. Red 2 is going to wait up here on the high ground. I'm not sure they want to take this fight. They do have all their ultimates available. If they can catch uh, everyone at the same time, get the fatal bonds off. With, uh, oh. All right, giant. Calm down. Giant doesn't know how to chill. Not at all. The Dismember Shard now picked up on Pudge here. So you do have that uh, 400 base cast range, um, I believe. It doesn't really say, because why would it? But 400 cast range on the Dismember to save an ally. Does it say anywhere? Shard cast range increased. It's just on It's just on the patch notes, but it doesn't say anywhere. Okay. So it does. Four, it's 400 range Dismember onto an ally, um, and he gets the Aether Lens. So, you know. Uh, you know, it's 625. Quite nice. Picked up the tier 1 tower. Bottom lane are working on uh, this tier 2. There's not really a whole lot that can stop them from uh, pushing onto the tier 3s here. Fortify is on cooldown as easy aggressively. They're trying to shove uh, Arkosh's high ground. And Canis can tear into this with his Desolator. Yeah, it just does so much work. The whole team sitting behind him. He does need to be careful of that hex, though. And Gremlo, he's the save for that, right? Like that's that's the idea behind this build. He just like four staffs in or blinks in, dismember four staff out, blink out. One of the one of those two, right? That's his actually the the idea between this Pudge build now. He's gonna sit behind the re uh, yeah, just sit behind this gyrocopter here. Slowed down a little bit, not feeling as confident to run at them anymore on E-Boys. Spectre, working on this Abyssal Blade. Again, this one, it felt like a little bit of a nerf. Uh, not having that uh, extra tool to get on top of a target and start beating them. Those first initial hits uh, when you've got like Eye of Scotty, super important on Spectre. Flicker is going to... Flicker does feel uh, kind of helpful in this game. Yeah, the Flicker is nice, for sure. You now have Refresher on the Phoenix. He's going for an Aeon Disc. What do you do with this? He is a, he is almost as farmed as Canis Vulpus in the mid lane. And he has a Spell Prism. <laughs> uh, I mean... He can't keep huh. getting away with this, Neff. Yet he does. Refresher. Shiva's Spell Prism. He's going Octarine instead. I actually like the Octarine. Uh, uh, why? I mean, more <laughs> cooldown reduction. Uh, I mean, when you, when, you this, when you have this kind of farm on a pause for, you get to do what you want. Uh, Kanis Volpus just gets first hit bashed into a hex. He's dead. Okay. He actually popped the uh, Minotaur Horn to not like go down there, but... Just gets immediately bashed instead, and that is an unlucky situation. They're TPing in Gremlo. The team gonna respond here. Gremlo does have four staff. He has to cancel his TP. Oh no, Pale Horse kind of baited out of position. He does have everything available. Crow as well. Hex comes out. Deafening Blast Meteor is there, but Spectre is ready to turn around. The call down comes through. There's gonna be the Sunray as well. Double Searing Chains holding him in place. Red 2 going for that TP out. He's gonna be successful. In the mid lane? A big kill Gremlo. onto Gremlo. Yeah, Spectre TP's, uh, Spectre would have gone down there if Gremlin was part of that fight, but Speedy haunts off onto the Pudge. Pudge ends up dismembering the wrong, uh, Spectre illusion there after he popped Manta and then dies to the Spectre. Yeah, that's a rough one. That's a yeah. huge win for the side of, uh, of E-Boys here. Like, they, they were 10k behind, uh, here not that long ago, now only 5,000. You get a big kill onto the, uh, Pudge. You force the buyback on the Ember Spirit, who... I mean, I think at this point just needs an Aeon Disc, but he's itemizing for a uh, BKB. It's, I don't know. Yeah. That uh, buyback definitely slowing him down quite a bit. Moving around uh, the enemy team's jungle with haste. They're not going to find anything. 
a little bit. Waiting for this clockwork to come back up. Very important, uh, you know, scouting things out for them. Smoke behind Pale Horse. Roche is up in 10 seconds. Just three seconds now, but... Giant's got two charges of his ult. It's hard to take a fight against them. Giant's almost always going to be able to get this off. He's got a BKB and a Lotus Orb complete as well. They want to initiate onto Canis. They can find oh. a kill on him. I think they just win the game. Pale Horse, Pale Horse. caught by Hex for a moment. Perched off by Goat. They're going to continue the chase, though. He has BKB and Satanic still available. Crow diving off to the backside. They get the first ultimate out of the Brewmaster. Goat going to come on down. Tornado. And catch onto one. Pale Horse pops that flat cannon, just doing a ton of damage speed. You're all up here by yourself. You need to be careful. Hookshot on the backside. It actually does clip Phoenix for the moment. Kreblo starting to rotate in. There's going to be that uh, golem, but ABZ, he's going to go down first. A second split coming in. The egg, it's going to pop, but it's not actually finishing off anyone quite yet. Double off on the side. Candice Volp is out of health, out of mana. Pale Horse still trying to stand his ground with this BKB. Gremlo blinks on forward. No mana left on him. These EMPs have just done too much work, and they can't cancel the TPs. Giant. He's going to make it one out. Second. He does have... Oh, he went BKB. to the wrong one. Giant. He's got to run. Forces the BKB. Pale Horse continuing the chase. He's going to be all right, though. Oh, he didn't end it. Yeah, he had his Storm issue. Panda. That's the default. You saw the Storm Panda, like, over here, right? Yeah. Oh. Ends up going down there. Spectre is forced to get back after that fight. He's sitting uh, too low. It's hard to bring down this Jarvocop, but the dispel comes off. So pops to Satanic. Attacking. He's standing alive, being killed up quite a bit. Sunray comes through. There's going to be the blade mail, though. And he gets devoured by Gremlo, and they will just back on out. Yeah. When this was added to the game, I had no idea where the enemies went a couple of times because. They just disappear. There's no animation on the hero, right? They're, yeah. they're, just, they're just boop. Yeah, they're just gone. <laughs> and teleported out of existence. Yeah, I didn't have vision on the punch uh, at the time either. Uh, so the hero just like disappeared. I tried to figure out what the hell happened. Kremlo hooks the rune instead of walking literally three feet. Okay. Uh, he's he's truly really living the punch life. Yeah, he's buffing stats. He's buffing stats. Yeah. Now, uh, last couple of... Oh. Hookshot comes out, stuns oh. Phoenix. That's a big kill. Yeah. Phoenix is, is such a thorn uh... in their side. They actually uh, continue the haunt on over the side. Canis Volpus caught by the dagger for the moment. I mean, he can get out very it's easily. It's the rest of his heroes. Oh, well, maybe not. Pops the Minotaur horn. Does he have a remnant? He throws it now. He's going to be fine. He is playing mm -hmm. with fire here. Well, that's what Ember does. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, it's uh, clever. Smoke up on the backside. They want to turn this around. Uh, Roshan is looking, up. They don't take this near fast enough. And Phoenix does have buyback available. They'll be able to force it here if they feel like they're going to take a fight. Phoenix can pop Manta, right? But call down. There's the buyback, the hook. He gets the right one, but speed, I think he kind of wants this. He's ready to go on in. Pale Horse taking a lot of damage. Pops the Satanic, pops that BKB, trying to just stand his ground on the backside. Phoenix finally showing up. Has that first Shiva's guard, and the egg will use it, doing a ton of damage. Red 2 going to try and just burst the egg. they got to keep the egg alive. Red 2, will he do it? The Gremlin comes in. The egg barely lives, and now speed in such a bad spot. The hook going to catch him. Triple kill for Crow. And it's uh, only Giant that remains, and he is without an ultimate. Five, four heroes with buyback still available. Nice cancel there on that uh, dismember, but it is going to be a five-man wipe here. The buyback from this Phoenix, so damn strong. Everything. I mean, the buffs here on the Satanic, the Gyrocopter, able to stand his ground. Uh, pop his Satanic, get that dispel off, pop the BKB afterwards. Has too many dispels to work with, and the fact that they have not enough hard lockdown on their heroes. Pale Horse uh, into an immediate panic. <laughs> yeah. Three by running out of there. Yeah. He's uh, pretty quick, though, 390 movement speed. But well, with the with the Omni Knight behind them, you know, that's one save. The Heavenly Grace dispel, the Pudge, uh, able to hook them out, uh, able to hit his allies with the dismember. <laughs> gobble him up. It's hard to lock down this gyrocopter and blow him up. You do a lot of damage but not enough to take out 4,000 HP instantly. Yeah, they get everything. They just cheese shard all on the deck. They will grab it all. Shard will be picked up on the gyro. Now two instances of rocket barrage as well as one second extra duration. Uh, it's just a nice thing to have, right? Yeah. 
Everyone else that wants a shard has it. I guess you could go the Fire Remnant DPS, but I don't think that's good enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not great. It feels okay. <sighs> I'm gonna hero dies, you get extra charges. You already have uh, Egg and Scepter. Yeah, uh, that's the thing, like right? Those. It's mainly just like you drop remnants out and they're like baby radiance. Of course, Kremlo just gonna sit super far back, make sure there is no chance of them going on the Pale Horse here with that dismember. Tornado comes out, able to purge off that uh, Heavenly Grace, but Missile comes out, pops his BKB. Oh, There's a oh, miscommunication there. Pale Horse popped the BKB for that, which means you won't have it after Aegis. They have to just back, I think. <laughs> uh, Gremlo's doing his best for his team here. I mean, he's just uh, physically carrying Pale Horse. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure Pale Horse is uh, loving that. <laughs> this is what getting carried feels like, huh? Yeah. Global call down was the choice here for the gyrocopter as opposed to the three homing missile charges. I feel like we don't see that all that often, but there was a time here where they are just having to split push lanes, and global call down is a great way to do that. Yeah. Oh, they are smoked up. E boys here, they're going to take a fight. This is the worst place on the map to go. And that smoke's gonna get popped. They have to just back the hook shot. It comes in. It finds Omniite on the backside, but he gets eaten by Gremlo. A nice save. Pale Horse pops that uh, Satanic, trying to do what he can. Thrown into the air by that big Cataclysm. Able to take down. Yeah, they get one, but the egg on the backside. Again, they're not focusing this, and it's just shredding everybody. He pops the refresher. Crow, he dives even farther. More aggressive. The <laughs> Meteor Hammer comes through red, protected by that BKB, but the GGs are just out. They can't keep the Spectre alive. And Arkosh Gaming take it 2 0, Neff. They've done it. Somehow, with this draft, they managed to win the game. Arkosh Gaming, I, I was saying this is an Action Slacks level draft, but they make it work. Pudge with the saves. The, the saves here from the Omniite super important. Just not enough lockdown for this gyrocopter. Every single time he's able to get off that Satanic BKB, and they can't burst through him. Yeah, absolutely. This was uh, this was a really sick performance. I mean, I was excited to see how they played the Pudge. I think this is how you how you should play this three position Pudge, right? This kind of mobility, and then you just get an Aether Lens and save anyone who gets gone on, right? And there's there's almost no counter to it. it that's what's so good. I mean, we remember Snapfire Ags is like this, you know, get out of jail free card for carries. Well, you know, imagine that, but like triple the cast range or quadruple the cast range type of scenario um so yeah this was just a, a great performance from arkosh they st they start their season strong with a 2-0 win over e-boys it's uh i guess well played uh, there by them e-boys thought they had that game for a moment but uh a nice showing here by arkosh you know kind of sus stuff uh you said uh net worth were jumping around we'll have to ask about that in just a moment and we will have the opportunity to because uh, we actually have an interview lined up very with, excited uh, for this one yeah it's uh i heard uh it's supposed to be a very uh, special guest yeah that's one word for it um <clears throat> well if we uh jump into the uh live showroom as we can grab them in just a second everybody yep um while in the meantime we can uh actually take a look at the bracket for this season um i think right now uh i do have let's see I believe we have that loaded jerry are you there yeah jerry's there let's take a look at the bracket um while we get the interview sorted out but um right now team dog champ um they are at the top uh one and zero pretty much a three-way tie you know we got the two teams in the uh middle here who uh kind of drew lanes or drew games but um this is where we are a couple two o's couple two ones uh and uh so far it's actually been a pretty great start to the uh to the dpc are we uh, do you know if we're ready for this interview? Is this is this happening, Neff? It looks like it. Uh, our special. Oh well, I may have cut Neff off there for a uh, for a hot second, but yes, uh, my apologies. Uh, while we uh, get this interview created, um, sir, would you uh, our special guest? Would you uh, like to share your camera so everyone can see your beautiful face? Okay, sorry, I wasn't very ready. I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, uh, you're fine. You got a moment. Uh, you got a moment to to get it configured. All good, sir. I got it. We're not Is the game them, uh... over? <laughs> Did we uh, win? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> this is what I expected. This is what I expected. Fantastic. 
Uh, you oh. actually lost. This is a loser's interview. Oh, I'm very no. sorry. <laughs> sorry oh, to break no. it to you, buddy. I know those idiots want to do it again. Uh, they also drew a bunch of you know images on the map, so we're gonna have to time you out of chat. No, luckily oh. I was uh, I was actually a giga brain. I saw it coming and uh, managed to pull open some uh, cosmetics to block the entire map, so no one could see it. So you Smart were man. you're welcome, Slacks. You have been sl you've been saved. That's why you guys are doing this right now, you know? <laughs> it's just classy gentlemen covering up the ding -a -lings. That's what we're about here at mm -hmm. the DPC. Thank yeah. God for you, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. you got to start this one I, off. What, what, I, you gotta I, okay, got to have a myriad of questions here. I've, I've got some real questions. The okay. drafting game number two, how much yeah. of this was your input? Uh, did they win this because of you? Uh, Absolutely 0%. I actually begged them to not do this um, mm -hmm. several times during the drafting phase. Uh, they have not actually played any scrims since the end of the last DPC, despite me setting one up for them each week. And they have not uh, attended those. And during uh, the conversation, all I heard was Pale Horse try to get PO with a shard, and then they rock, paper, scissored uh, for Gremlo to get his pudge. So... Um, it is actually shameful, and I, I worked very hard on a bunch of different strats, and uh, they are ignoring me. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do you think that they uh, they don't respect you? Uh, you know, being a what second place runner up at uh, TI six, I believe your name is on uh, your name would have been on the Aegis that year. Sure. Uh, Thank you for bringing that up. That's mm -hmm. a, a great memory for me that I love reliving. Um, no, I don't think they respect me. I don't think they respect God or the fans, or anything. I think that they are literally demons, and I don't know how many times I can uh, reiterate this in post-game interviews, but they <laughs> should legitimately be stopped. And you people continue to uh, put them on a pedestal and give them more power, and I don't understand why. I'm going to be honest, this is not what I was expecting with this post-game interview. Your attitude with Arkosh has uh, done a, a 180, it feels like. I'd have to imagine... Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll let you... Oh, please. I was going to say, I have to imagine you're just fed up with their antics, right? Like, this is... They're just a bunch of children uh, masquerading around, and, and no one can stop them, it seems. Well, I did sign a blood contract um, to be coach and manager for eternity so that my hair would grow back. It is getting a sheen and a shine. So I'm a little happy about that, but uh, I didn't realize the torment that it would be on the soul of a man to uh, manage and coach a team that uh, literally drinks children's blood. So I don't know. I mean, it's. I thought I'd be cool with it. The hair is looking good, though, right? It looks great. It's it's for, uh, the mustache is coming in, too. So For somebody who's been in eSports as long as you, you have a surprisingly nice hairline. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, it, it it's growing in, baby. So, uh, yeah. Benefits in some ways, eternal damnation of the soul, definitely not good in other ways. But I got to say, you two are doing such a great job casting. And uh, being, I, I love watching the DPC <laughs> last week, watching it uh, last season, watching it this season again. So good to have you back. I... They wrote several letters asking for both of you to be fired, so I'm really glad that the guys over at BTS and Gods, uh, they did not pay attention to those and the um, actual... Uh, it's all right. If uh, Gremla was, had any hand in writing them, I'm sure they were riddled with uh, spelling errors. Uh, you could barely tell what he was trying to say. Well, we've seen Mostly. his all chat in some of these games, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you uh, do you do you guys know how the uh, situation is between uh, Gremlo now and uh, we we were talking about how Pale Horse is now in an even worse place. Uh, you know, Gremlo's in his dungeon. Pale Horse, uh, he, he he's in, apparently no longer here in NA, which is like crazy. Oh. They're like, I can't imagine what what torture that must be like. Yeah, you know, uh, things got a little too easy. We could have easily gone into Division One, and we decided this year we would add 300 ping uh, to the team to keep it competitive for Division Two. And uh, yeah, he is uh, currently playing in the seventh circle of, um, you know, the underworld. So I hear they uh, don't he, have fiber there. No, they don't. But great Wi-Fi. Uh, still better, surprisingly, than uh, Southeast Asia. So. Mm. Uh, speaking mm. of Wi-Fi, is Keenis Volpa still using a uh, trackpad? No, actually, uh, we oh. did get an upgrade. Uh, some of our winnings from last year, we uh, upgraded him, and now uh, he is playing with Steam Link. He downloads the game, and he plays it on his iPhone. So uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, you can download that whenever you want. He uses Remote Play Together, too, to uh, log in. So, wow. 
That's impressive. Yeah, I could, it looked like he was playing on a phone or something based on his performance in the midline. You know, he died a couple times. In Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, gentlemen, I just want to say, of course, uh, give it out to the fans. Awaken. You know, head out there. You know, keep up the spam in the chat. Um, please, though, if you could stop saying all of the characters' names in your mirrors past 12 p.m. We do need to sleep. We do need to scrim. And uh, if you say it four times, they will arrive and uh, Canis Mopus has just been given so much drugs over the last year and a couple months from teleporting into teenagers' bedrooms and frat parties. So please stop. We need the script. So thank you so much. That makes a lot of sense. I, it's understandable. It's a pretty reasonable request, I think. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Shout out to Artifact, baby. We're still here. We're still alive. <laughs> pumping it out, baby. Let's go. Never give up. <laughs> Never give up. Never surrender. Slacks, it's Hell yeah. always a, a pleasure with you, man. You're a goddamn legend. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in for the interview. And uh, you have a wonderful rest of your day, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> All right. Did you just curse at us? Just... Uh... Is that what it uh... No, I, I gotta say, it's pretty low energy for slacks. It, it sounds like, you know, despite, you know, getting a little bit of hair back, is it, having his soul siphoned out of him or something. Yeah, that was uh, that was a little bit of a bizarre one. I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I think, like we said, you know, they're taking a it's a it's a big effort for him um, to, to manage this team. I mean, it's these guys are they're ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I gotta say, his hair uh, is looking uh, a lot nicer. Uh, I, I was expecting him to have a little bit more hand in uh, that draft there, but apparently they did this regardless of uh, what Slack says. So, you know, blood contracts, man. Well, I'm surprised they, these they guys still have fans after yeah. what their manager said. Yeah. Um, that being said, Neff, we've done it. We've reached the end of the night. It's our first time back here on the NADPC Season 2. It's been a blast of a Saturday. And... Uh, it's got a lot of action coming your way tomorrow we have three series going back to back to back again that's gonna be starting off with evil geniuses versus the cut and quincy crew versus simply two based and the final series of the day is gonna be the lower division match and that's gonna be uh felt versus uh d2 hustlers so a lot of north american dota coming your way everyone um so definitely make sure to tune back in tomorrow it's actually starting at uh is it three o'clock still? It starts at three o'clock still, am I not mistaken? Let me double check. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure I'm right with my information here before I tell everyone the wrong things. It's happening at noon. Ignore everything I just said. It is happening at uh, 12 o'clock Pacific time. Um, so yeah, should be a, a lot of fun. Neff, any uh, final thoughts of the day before we uh, cut everyone loose? Uh, congratulations to Arkosh for the uh, quick 2-0. Managed to do it with some not commonly picked heroes. I loved what... Uh throw head going on that game uh, a lot of fun to see uh i hope e-boys bounce back from this one and you know maybe uh we get to see them have a rematch as tiebreakers at the end of the season Gene Starkosh, we'll see yeah. hopefully hopefully and uh before we take off today obviously we just want to give a big shout out to uh this season's sponsor it's going to be uh xpg so thank you xpg um and for everyone that is here uh make sure uh to check out some of their stuff uh don't get ganked you can actually uh get a sick pc here it is the xpg zinnia gunmetal uh gaming notebook uh with gank defender on there so i know i'm super tired of being ganked in pubs neff uh mainly just because i'm bad but uh you know you guys pick up some of their swag uh thank you guys so much for sponsoring the tournament we really do appreciate you and uh that's gonna do it for us here at the uh nadpc we'll be back tomorrow not f and i but other people will to cast more and more dota uh thank you all so much for tuning in we will see you next time